Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Hope you're having a great evening, great morning, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Just thank you so much for being there. Today we're going to take a look at a record. Uh, this one is Memories of Steam. A collection of steam locomotive stereophonic recordings. Audio Fidelity, DFS 7048 in stereo. Playable on stereo and mono phonographs. And as you can see, we've got some lovely color images of some locomotives recorded and compiled by Kenneth Granville Atwood. Now, this is an interesting record because in the 50s and 60s, making recordings, uh, environmental recordings, what we would call ambient recordings today, really started to pick up with the advent of magnetic recording technology. You had a tape recorder, you know, anybody can do it kind of a thing. So you started seeing more of these like, you know, professional and obviously amateur recordings as well. This one being professional. Memories of Steam, a collection of steam locomotives, all kinds of detail on the individual tracks. You'll see that they identify them by bands, band one, band two, band three versus tracks but that's the the idea there so a lot of infor information here obviously this is going to be targeted to a uh, very specific demographic and yeah that's about all there is to it uh, the record itself is interesting off camera here i'm just taking it out of the uh, protective sleeve here it is audio fidelity memories of steam check that out at the top doctored for super stereo series that's a syringe yeah not my favorite type of imagery but whatever it is r-i-a-a -A. and that's something we really need to do a show about what that means what it means when you see it stamped on a record how that correlates to your equipment all that good stuff that's a different show for a different day but this is a product of Audio Fidelity Records Incorporated, a study in stereophonic high fidelity, 33 and a third at 60 cycles AC. That's side two, side A, or side one is very similar. So we're going to listen today on the LP7. Just to change it up a bit, I'm still kind of using the uh, LP3 a lot. I just love, you know, the ability to reach over and push a button and make it happen, but... The LP7 is a beautiful turntable. It is gorgeous, and um, it's a treat to be able to use that whenever we can. So today we're going to, and we'll be listening on, uh, you can just see a little bit in the corner here, the uh, Crosley S100 speakers. It'll be a direct connection. None of that Bluetooth garbage. Just kidding. It's not garbage, but we are a direct connection, so we get that true audio sound. That is until my camera records it digitally and it gets uploaded in a compressed video file that gets recompressed and then streamed in lossy compression to whatever you're watching it on but enough of that let's enjoy this what was at one point analog sam um so yeah without further ado let's just cue it up i don't think we'll have to worry about any copyright issues on this i hope and let's just start at the beginning I have no idea what's on this. I haven't heard it before. If you hear the clicking, that's the clicking volume control I'm making, or adjustment I'm making. Thinking Polar Express already. By the way, this is a mono microphone I'm using, so you're not going to get the stereo effect. Oh, that's quite shrill. Okay, let's move on a little bit here. This looks like band five. Let's try band five. Yeah, it's super quiet now. Sometimes when you get those static pops on the record, this has some static electricity built up. It'll kind of quiet the audio a bit. I 
I should have demagnetized this or run the carbon fiber brush on it a little bit. This is super specialty stuff. Not going to appeal to everybody. Unless you're into trains, definitely. Or you just like, you know, audio recordings and it's interesting to listen to an ambient recording. I'll turn up the volume a little bit. It's the annoying thing about the Crosley volume control is you have that clicky, clicky, clicky adjustment versus the knob on the Personas. Turn up the bass a little bit. Roll back the treble just a tiny bit. be a funny record just to play for somebody when they start it when they're asleep and don't explain what's happening and just let it play bizarre it really really is bizarre i love trains i love ambient sounds but just to have a bunch of train sounds like this it's interesting it's an interesting thing by the way i like to you know review when i'm reviewing a record i like to talk about the actual pressing this feels you know typical thickness so probably 120 130 gram pressing it's got a sharp edge on it and it's got a nice rainbow sheen. And this lighting, it doesn't come across on camera. You can see it a little bit over there. But that indicates to me that it probably has some of the original polish on it still. And uh, it's in good condition. It's nice and flat. I don't see any warpage. Um, quiet surface. I probably could use a, a deep clean. I don't know if I... I try to clean everything I get when I, you know, when I bring it home, when I buy it now. But it's possible I miss this one. But let's listen to a couple more here on side two. It's interesting, some of the recordings like that one sounded very distant, like the actual, you know, subject that was being recorded was far away. Whereas that one is very close. Interesting. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Pretty cool though. I mean, it is very interesting. It really, really is. Where's the, where's the cover again? Take another look at this. So tell me in the comments down below, do you guys have any train sound records or any other ambient records? Tell me about it below. When I first picked this up, I was wondering if this person that made this was the same one that recorded the storm sounds from the famous One Stormy Night and One Stormy Weekend albums which are fun to listen to as well. Uh, again, you know, 1960s, in that case, 1960s, very, uh, you know, popular time for ambient recording and stuff like that. And in that case, mixing it with music. For this one, it's just purely the ambient sounds. I mean, mixing this with music would be, tr would be tricky. It would be, <laughs> be a little bit hard to do. 
This is definitely a special... Oh, this is kind of cool. Look at this. I love it when they say what it was recorded on. Oh, it was recorded in London. Interesting. Recorded on a Ewer 4200 stereo recorder, including the microphones. I love it when they show this kind of stuff. So cool. I did not even think of those as being British locomotives. That one in the upper left is for sure. That one on the right kind of looks American. That one looks British. I didn't even think about that. That's super cool. Super neat. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.